given the vibe, the mood for this morning's service. We've got our PowerPoints coming up in just a minute. This morning, we're going to be talking about Mission Possible. Hence why we thought we'd start with a, a bit of a music. I wonder, should I come by zip wire down onto the stage? Or like, come from the ceiling? Or like, do some sort of martial arts across the stage? And I decided, no, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna come and stand up and uh, try not to embarrass myself too much. I hope you're all really well. And uh, I hope you are enjoying the service so far. It's great to have the presence of God with us, isn't it? And it was great last week to get the Vision Sunday with Pastor John. And lots of you I know were here. And lots of you stayed for the picnic afterwards. The hand up if you were with us for the picnic. It was great to have so many of you there. What a great Sunday it was. So today is part two of our vision. And I plan to remind us today of the vision that Pastor John gave us last week. More of the same and things must change. Do you remember that? And I want to explain today how this all fits into our Kingsway mission statement. So let's just pray for a moment. Lord, as we talk about your mission and the Kingsway mission today, Lord, just open our hearts, open our minds, and may your Holy Spirit be very much present in everything that is said today. In Jesus' name, amen. So there are a number of verses in the Bible that tell us that with people, it is impossible But with God, it is possible. So we see it in a variety of contexts. So Matthew 19, 26, he's talking about salvation. And Luke 1, 37, the angel's talking to Mary about her cousin, Elizabeth, being pregnant. Mark 9, 23, Jesus calls out an evil spirit from a young boy. There are loads of times where we're reminded in the Bible that our God can make the impossible possible. And that's what I want to talk about. I want us to read again today the verse in Philippians 4.13, which I read as part of the service last week, as this is also about God making things possible. And as we talk about our Kingsway mission today, I want us to keep these words in our heart, and I want us to all read them together. So if you're able to, let's read this, and let's believe it. Let's say it as if we believe this. Are you ready? I can do all things which he has called me to do through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. Excellent reading, I believe you. So a few days ago, I was at a very lovely restaurant and I had a pot of tea that was made out of glass. Since we got back, one of my lovely friends has actually bought me a very similar pot to remind me. And as I was drinking, I could see how the tea leaves were infusing the hot water. And it reminded me about this verse, about the infusion, that it wasn't just one part of the water that was being impacted, but the whole of the pot was being infused with the tea. And as we think about our Kingsway mission statement today, let's remember these words, that he will infuse us with strength and confident peace, and that it will impact every part of our lives. So, your mission. Let's have a look at our Kingsway Church mission It's on the wall in the foyer as you come in and also in our community entrance. So for some of you, this might be the first time really you've you've seen this. And for others, you've seen this for years. It's very much part of your heart for the church. But as we start on this next stage of our Kingsway journey, I want to make sure we're all on the same page together. We're all clear about what our family mission here is. Because that's what church is, is, isn't it? It's a family. And I know some of you today don't have a lot of extended family around you. Some of us are blessed to be part of three generations that come here to Kingsway Church, and that is a real blessing. But I know for some of you today, you might be single, or you might come here just on your own without the rest of your family. But I want you to know today that you are valued and you are very much part of this church family. I want you to feel included, that this mission is for you as well. You are invited to be part of it. John said last week that part of the vision is more of the same. 
And so I want you to know that our mission statement at Kingsway isn't going to change. It hasn't changed. It's the same. In Habakkuk 2.2, we're reminded to write down a revelation and make it clear. And that's what we're going to do this morning, have some clarity on the mission. So here it is. Living for Jesus, transforming lives, building community. So let's have a look at these verbs, live, transform, and build. And I want you to know that this is actually a process. These actions are all connected to each other. We live for Jesus, and as we do that, our lives are transformed so we can then build community together. It's his infusion that strengthens us for our mission to build community. It's summarized really simply in very famous verse, Matthew 22, 30 to 7 to 39. And Jesus says, he, he says this, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And this is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So we love God. And then it gives us the strength and capacity to love people. We're not expected to carry out this mission through our own strength. It's just too hard, and we will burn out, and I see it so often. We've got to be infused first of all. So let's see it on the screen as a process. So as we live for Jesus, this means we love God. We love Jesus. He's our priority in our lives. And as we do that, our lives are transformed. We change. We don't stay the same. We are infused with his strength, which results then in our community being built and we love others. So our mission's not changing. We want more of this, more of the same. But part two of the vision last week was that some things have to change. So your mission, should you choose to accept it, you have a choice to make as things change. And I know that some of us don't enjoy change very much, but if we've learned anything in the last 18 months is that things probably will change, sometimes at a speed beyond anything that we can imagine. And so today I encourage you, accept the changes and let's move as a church united together. So I'm going to take a look back at some of the points that John made last week. And I want you to know that this is a united vision of the church leadership What I want to do today is just add in some more details for you here so that the vision and mission is clear for the weeks ahead. So firstly, John mentioned our building, the spacious place. So I want to honour again those who have given generously and sacrificially over many years for us to have the building that we've got here today. It didn't just land in, in laps. People have given over many years financially and so we are grateful for that. I call this building our spacious place. God gave me uh, Psalm 1819 a number of years ago, and it says, he brought me out into a spacious place. And at the time, I didn't really know what it meant, but I know what it means now, because here we are. And I'm feeling so incredibly blessed with the amazing rooms and the provision of this building. Trish M. Taj gave me a fantastic tour of the storage. Who knew that was a thing? Incredible. She talked, walked me around, and what an incredible blessing to have so much space. But we do not have magic elves that keep it tidy and maintained. Lots of people work very hard to look after our gardens, keep the building maintained, and we are so grateful for that. But we all need to play our part, don't we? If we see something on the floor, let's pick it up. Let's look after our building together. Let's look after this resource that God has given us. I know that I've come in and I've moved some furniture around and we've had some walls painted. I say that we've had them painted. Baz has been brilliant. He's he's been incredible. And everyone has been really gracious at giving me the freedom to do that. But I know that there is going to be potential for the changes in our rooms in the months to come. We've got an incredible kitchen upstairs. I know lots of you have seen it and it's brilliant for our kids and for the New Horizons groups we mentioned But it's just not very practical for us to be going up and down those stairs on a Sunday. So as part of our culture of hospitality here at Kingsway, we want to really be able to offer tea and coffee and refreshments downstairs 
especially on Sundays as part of our services. So in the next few months, we're just going to be thinking it through, getting some sort of plan together. We don't know what it's going to look like yet, but it would be great, wouldn't it, to pull together some sort of fund to be able to get a cafe area, coffee lounge of some form downstairs. So we are not asking any of you to give any financial gifts today for this. However, if you don't already give regularly to the finances of the church, then I just encourage you, today's a great day to just review it. Tithing is is a biblical principle, and I know lots of you already do this, and we are so grateful for it. Otherwise, we just wouldn't be here. It keeps everything running. Giving you a percentage of your wages every month. And if this is a new thing and you don't know much about it, please come and speak to one of us. We will talk it through with you. It is one of the mysteries of faith that as we give financially, we see God's blessing back to us in an incredible way. It does happen. I don't know how, but it does happen. And as soon as we've got a plan of how we're going to use our spacious place in different ways, then we will let you know because it will bless you, it will bless the wider church community. So we'll let you know as soon as we get any plans for that. And as John said, we're aware we might need some other further extensions too. So let's just see what God is going to do. But we need to be very aware that we need to steward our resources well. We need to steward our finances well. And we need to look after our building, our spacious place, and appreciate it. Number two, John mentioned city of refuge. The reality is that people do need a safe place to come to. They need time to allow them to heal from whatever has damaged them in the past. And we want people to come, become disciples, to grow, to be developed in their faith. And John and myself have only just started to really think through our small groups and our pastoral care system. And we know that as pastors of the church, that we have the responsibility to lead the pastoral care. But we need your help. There's a lot of people here. And we want to reach as many hurting people as we can in the years ahead. And we know that having a structure of our small groups and pastoral care in the church with leaders who already have shown a great pastoral gifting is going to be really important. I know that there are some people in this church who do some things for other people that we don't ever hear about, but are an incredible blessing. We've got a team of people who give flowers and gifts and cards and just tell people that they are loved, and we really appreciate that, and we just want to make sure that we can maintain that and have a really great structure of communication for that in the months ahead. Last week, we mentioned our toddler groups. Helen Walters has popped upstairs. I think she's on Quest this morning. But Helen Walters shared with me a great encouragement that I just want to read out to you now for her toddler group that she does. She said this, I've noticed for the short time that we were back before the summer holidays how quiet the kids were, almost struggling to know how to play. However, over the weeks, they have gained confidence as well as the mums and nans and carers and childminders that bring the little ones. And I think this is because, one of our ladies put it, it's a safe place. And this particular lady, she's a childminder, she's been coming a while, she suffers with anxiety. But the first day she returned, she told me she shed a tear of happiness coming back. And although she doesn't have a faith yet... She feels a wave of peace and calm come over her when she is at playgroup. Isn't that brilliant? What an incredible encouragement. I'm glad that Helen shared that. Such a beautiful example of Kingsway being a city of refuge. And may we have many more stories like that in the months ahead. Number three, multi-generational. I spent last week explaining about our Quest and Thrive groups. We've just prayed for New Horizons, so I'm not going to spend long on this. It was so great to chat with so many of you at the picnic last week. So many different age groups represented. And I know that we had a number of discussions about the importance of every generation learning from each other. So if we're going to function as a family church, we need every generation valued and loved. And everyone needs access to church in a way that's relevant for them. That's why we have our separate groups as well as our whole church family together. So one thing that will be changing in October 
is that we will start to have a monthly Sunday night youth service. So Thrive will be running the other Sundays, and it starts back tonight at 6 p.m. And this term in Thrive, we're going to be doing a Christian well-being course. So it's going to be incredible. Please keep everyone in your prayers. But on the first Sunday of the month, starting in October, there's going to be a youth service. This is open to anyone, regardless of your age, but it is going to be aimed at making the gospel accessible to the younger generation. So the music volume and the lighting might be different. The format probably won't be the same as it is on a Sunday morning. But we really want to give as many opportunities as we can for young people to hear about Jesus. And the reality is, is that Sunday mornings are just not always accessible for youth for all sorts of different reasons. So our first Youth Sunday service will be on October the 3rd, 6 till 7 p.m. Please pray for everyone involved and for our young people too. It's going to be exciting. Fourth point, future-proof. I didn't really know what to call this point because John talked about me coming on board, but I want you to know that this isn't just about me coming on board. This is about all of us playing our part in the new season ahead. John mentioned, didn't he, about his journal last week, and I write a journal too. I've written here, less moaning and grumbling in mine, I think. Um, But a lot of, please Jesus, help me today. There's a lot of that in my journal. On the 15th of March, 2018, so this is just a few months before you read your bit out, a few months before, and I wrote this, Psalm 23, 4, show me your ways, Lord. And my prayer that day was simply, open the right doors, and I wrote the word, Kingsway, question mark, question mark, question mark. That was back in 2018. So as we think about the future, it's good to ask God, what doors do you want to open for me, Lord? What path do you want me on? God had been whispering to me about Kingsway for a number of years before the door opened. Involve God in the process and see how he leads your thoughts. A great friend of mine, Marion Craggs, I smile as I read her name because she's so great. She sent me this quote a few weeks ago. God's voice often feels like our own thoughts, but wiser and more tender-hearted. And I loved that. I thought, that's brilliant, isn't it? So I encourage you, don't give up on the waiting. If you think God has been whispering to you about your future, maybe it's just a question of timing but let's find contentment in the waiting room and serve wherever we are positioned at this moment, preparing for what path he's got planned for you in the future. Here's a quote about future-proofing. It is the process of anticipating the future and developing methods of minimising the effects of shocks and stresses of future events. I like that. Minimising the effect of shocks and stresses We're really excited, aren't we, about James coming in to do our business admin over the next few years, and he's helping us to do this. This is part of us future-proofing. He's been brilliant this week. It's been a joy to have him in the office with us. And as we think about the next few years and the future, we want to make sure that communication and leadership is really transparent and clear. And one of our focuses is going to be setting up our church suite system to help us future-proof going forwards. So I know many of you will have heard about this from from other churches. It's been around now for quite a number of years. And it's just a great way for us to improve how we communicate for you all. And also, it helps us to make sure we get dates out and events organised effectively. And there is huge scope for us to use it for all sorts of things. I know that Helen and myself have looked at it for kids. And I mean, there's loads of things we can do. But for now, our main focus is let's get people registered in the address book. That task alone is big enough to start off with. So we're going to start small and simple, and James is helping us with this. So we know that not everyone has an email, so we're still going to try and make sure that information is available in as many different formats as we can. And we're going to look at maybe updating the website in the months to come. There's lots to do, but this is a really easy way for us to start making sure that information is up to date. We've trialled it a little bit with some of our Crest and our Thrive parents, and some of you have already filled in your data protection form, so I know you've got them around on your seats. 
So if you've become a member of the church recently, you will have already filled one of these in because that's part of your membership process. If you want to know more about it, more about becoming a church member at any stage, please come to myself or John and we'll talk to you about that. But for now, we're going to talk about these sheets. So James has worked really hard getting the system set up. It's ready. And so the sheet on your chair is for you to fill in today if possible. But if not, don't worry. You can fill it in over the next few days. And as you leave today, we've got these white baskets next to our offering baskets. And if you could pop them in there and maybe pop your communion pots by the side. We're just going to need lots of pots, aren't we, everywhere? But if you could pop your white sheets in those white baskets, that would be brilliant. We've got a privacy policy ready in place, which is in line with all of the GDPR regulations. We will keep your information safe. It will only be used for church. We're not going to give your information to other companies. And if you've got any questions about how we're storing your data, please come and speak to us. Paul Freeman isn't here today, I don't think, but Paul Freeman's brilliant with all our policies and procedures, and he's the guy that that will be able to answer your questions. As you fill it in, I've got a quick request from James. Please make your handwriting really clear. It just makes it so much quicker and easier for him. So if you can print it out or make it really obvious what your letters are, especially with people's email addresses, you get all weird and wonderful things, don't you, with an email address. So as you're filling it out, just make sure it's really clear. If you've already done it recently for your membership, then if you want to fill another one out just to make sure that's fine, but don't worry about it. So we've discussed your mission. Should you choose to accept it, my final point is this. Don't (laughs) self-destruct. I know there's a lot of information today, I am aware, and we are going to take things slowly. We're going to try and move together. Unity is important, isn't it? It's an important part of of us getting our mission done, making it a success. Otherwise, we will self-destruct. And sadly, I hear too many stories of churches who do self-destruct. They become divided, and the results are not good, and we do not want that for Kingsway, do we? We want to stay family united. For those of you who are, who are my age and older, I'm going to teach you a new saying today. You ready to, every day's a school day, isn't it? So there are some sayings that our younger generation have that the rest of us have to catch up on. If you're a techie person, you probably know this already. But when we're sitting around our dining room table at home, sometimes it feels like I'm learning a new language. If you've got kids, you'll know what it is. They come out with all sorts of things. So a new thing that I want to teach you today is this. PVP. So my 10-year-old daughter taught me this one. Anyone know what PVP means? I thought I'd get an answer over there. What does it mean? Excellent. I knew we'd get someone. Player versus player. Ethan, you get 10 points. Player versus player. So these are the types of games that you play on the Xbox or PlayStation or online. And these games have got an interactive element to them. So you're competing with someone else who's also playing the same game at the same time. I want you to know that Kingsway Church is not a PvP church. We're not competing with each other. We champion each other. We support each other. We celebrate with each other. We encourage each other. We welcome others. We include everyone in our conversations. We smile at others. We love others. We have a culture of hospitality and we lavish love on everyone. That's really important to me. We are not a player versus player church. Kingsway Church is a family mission. One of the relationship principles that we had at Calvary was called the Lazarus Principle. Sounds a bit strange, doesn't it? Lazarus was dead and in the tomb for three days. And so the policy we had is if you've got a problem with someone in the church, you have got three days to sort it out, pray it through, otherwise it starts to stink. (laughs) And that applies to all of us here today. If you know you've got a long-lasting issue with someone, I suggest you pray about it and you get it sorted today. And if you know this is an area you struggle with, and we all struggle with this at some point, offence and bitterness, oh my goodness, we all have this as a problem. But if you know it's long-lasting, there is a book by a man called John Bevere called Bait of Satan. It is not an easy book to read, but it will transform you. So I suggest you read that book. I'm going to finish with Galatians 5, and it says this. 
You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. And that's the answer, isn't it, to completing our mission here on earth. We walk by the Spirit. We love God. We infuse ourselves with his strength, and we love people. We live for God. We have transformed lives. We build community. And we know that with God, our Kingsway mission is possible. Possible.